So You Want to Be an Adventure by Judith St. George. Are you a kid who likes to tinker with machines that clink and clank, levers that pull, bells that ring, cogs that grind, switches that turn on and off, wires that vibrate, dials that spin? You watch TV, ride a bike, phone your friends, pop popcorn in a microwave, go to the movies. Inventions. And you want to be an inventor, too. You don't have to have white hair and wrinkles to be an inventor. At 12, Benjamin Franklin invented, invented swim paddles for his hands and kick battles for his feet. When he grew up, Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod, Franklin stove, fireplace damper, library step stool, and odometer to measure the distance that a vehicle travels. At 77, he invented bifocal glasses. He probably needed them. Do you have a brother? Brothers can help. Connecticut Patriot David Bushnell would have sunk without his brother, Ezra. David wasn't strong enough to operate all the cranks, handles, and pumps in the submarine he invented during the Revolutionary War, so Ezra did it for him. In 1895, Guglielmo Marconi had his brother, Alfonso, take a mile-and-a-half hike with a receiver and a gun. If he received the signals Guglielmo sent, he was to fire the gun. Pow! That gunshot broadcast the birth of Galibos' invention, the radio. If you want to be an inventor, you need to fi find a need and fill it. Cyrus McCormick got tired of reaping wheat on his family's farm with a hand scythe. It took forever. So, in 1831, he invented a mechanical reaper. The flapping reaper frightened the horses, but it reaped in a few hours what three men could reap in a day. The son of runaway slaves, Elijah McCoy, was an oil man on a railroad. To oil the pistons, gears, and bearings, the train had to be stopped. In 1872, he invented a lubricator that oiled the pistons, gears, and bearings while the engine was running. Other workers wanted his invention for their engines but they wanted the real McCoy lubricators, or nothing. If you want to be an inventor, be a dreamer. As a boy in Scotland, Alexander Graham Bell had a dreaming place. When he grew up, he dreamed of people talking across distances, maybe by electric signals. Electric signals it was. In 1876, he invented the telephone. Young Russian Igor Skakorsky dreamed of a different way to fly, up, down, forward, backward, and sideways. Igor's brother poked fun at him. It will never fly. He was wrong. With its three blades whirling in 1939, Igor's dream helicopter took off. If you want to be an inventor, keep your eyes open. On a 1914 trip to Labrador, Fur trader Clarence Birdseye watched Eskimos freeze fish on the ice. When the fish thawed, they tasted fresh. Would fast freezing food between two metal plates work as well? It did. All those frozen dinners, pizza, and other frozen yummies come to you by the way of Clarence Birdseye. After a country walk with his dog in 1948, Swiss engineer Georges de Mistral picked cockleburrs off his pants. Why the cockleburrs looked gripped the wool loops in his pants. Hooks and loops, the perfect fastener. George's invention, Velcro. An inventor has to be stubborn as a bulldog. Yankee Charles Goodyear spent 10 years trying to make raw rubber usable. He spent all his money and was thrown into debtor's jail before he hit the jackpot in 1839 by treating raw rubber with sulfur under heat. Tires, tennis balls, and all sorts of other rubber goodies have been bouncing around ever since. Thomas Edison spent more than a year looking for a thin thread called a filament that would glow without burning up when electricity passed through it. He tried platinum, nickel, gold, silver, fish line, cotton thread, coconut hair, people hair, wood shavings, cork, and more. 
Carbonized bamboo was the answer. Edison's 1879 incandescent lamp, a lamp that stayed lit, brightened lives everywhere. Don't worry if people laugh at you. Everyone mocked Robert Fulton's steamboat, calling it Fulton's Folly, and a floating sawmill caught on fire. But the laughter lost steam in 1807 when Robert Clermont chugged up the Hudson River from New York to Albany with paddle wheels churning and flags waving. Newspapers laughed at Robert Goddard for trying to invent a space rocket. They called him Moon Man and a hoaxer. He was no hoaxer. Thanks to Moon Man, Robert Goddard's 1926 invention of a liquid fuel rocket, the spacecraft Apollo 11 landed Americans safely on the moon in 1969. Inventors aren't all men. Illinois homemaker Josephine Cochran figured other women were as fed up with washing dishes and red hands as she was. In 1886, she put together a wooden tub, wire basket, and hand pump to invent the very first dishwasher. Movie star Hedy Lamar said, Any girl can look glamorous. All you have to do is stand still and look stupid. Beautiful Hedy Lamar wasn't stupid. Just before World War II, she fled Austria and Hitler for the United States, where she and a friend invented a system for guiding torpedoes by radio signals. Her goal? Beat Hitler. Even presidents can be inventors. George Washington invented a 16-sided treading barn in 1792. Horses trampled over wheat spread on the barn floor. The grain dropped through slots. Eureka! George Washington's wheat supply was dry, stored, and ready to be ground into flour. Thomas Jefferson invented a two-face clock. One face inside, it told the day, hour, minute, and second. And one face outside, its Chinese gong would be heard three miles away. Jefferson wasn't called smart for nothing. The ropes holding the weights were so long that he cut holes in the floor to let the weights hang in the basement. Maybe you like to work alone. Alexander Graham Bell worked alone at night, every night, inventing the graphophone and iron lung, kites to study flight, and, of course, the telephone. To take night from me is to rob me of life, he declared. Nikola Tesla was world famous for inventing the alternating current motor in the 1880s to produce huge amounts of electricity that could be sent over long distances. But Nikola lived in lonely New York hotel rooms and had no family, few friends, and only worked for himself. Maybe you'd rather invent as part of a team. Thomas Edison forged a crew of inventors who huddled day and night over clanking, hissing motors, smelly chemicals, and machines that sent sparks flying. He and his crew came up with the incandescent lamp, the movie camera, the phonograph, and more than a thousand other inventions. One invention can lead to another. In the early 1900s, Henry Ford jumped from Michigan farm boy to king of the road. He didn't invent the automobile, but he did perfect mass production and the moving assembly line that had workers slapping his Model T Ford cars together in a hurry. Other inventors hopped on board. Mary Anderson invented windshield wipers, swish swish. Garrett Morgan came up with the traffic light. Red, stop. Yellow, slow. Green, go. Elmer Wavering invented car radios. A little music, please. More cars? More accidents. Alan Breed's airbags saved lives. Whoosh! Wouldn't Henry Ford be amazed at what he had started? Sometimes an invention creates more problems than it solves. In 1793, Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin that cleaned cotton 50 times faster than workers cleaning by hand. Wire spikes pulled cotton through slots too narrow for the seeds. But more and more slaves were needed to grow more and more cotton. Eli's Whit Eli Whitney's cotton gin sowed the seeds of the Civil War. Watch out! Your invention might scare people. Swedish chemist Alfred Nobel invented dynamite in 1860 but in 1866 by mixing nitroglycerin with chalky soil. But when five workers were killed in an explosion... Alfred was ordered to work outside the city on a barge in the middle of a lake. 
While experimenting in 1895, scientist Wilhelm Rontag was shocked when he turned an electric switch and saw light rays glowing from a screen he had treated with barium. X-rays. People freaked out. Did seeing their own bones mean they would die? Or were x-rays really death rays? Be careful. The truth is inventing can be dangerous. At an 1854 New York City fair, Elisha Otis stood on a platform that was raised up 30 feet by rope. He ordered the rope cut. The platform fell, but iron teeth grabbed the notches in the guide rails and stopped the platform cold. All safe, gentlemen, all safe, Elisha called out. His safety brake invention worked. Some of Orville and Wilbur Wright's early 1900s flying machines landed safely, and some didn't. Poor Orville. He was hurt in a glider crash, two airplane crashes, and a plane crash that knocked him out and broke his leg and ribs. Flying machine, cloth, and sticks in a heap with me in the center, Orville wrote in his diary. Some inventions are invented before their time. If Leonardo da Vinci hadn't been born more than 550 years ago, he could have been one of the greatest. He thought up and sketched an air cooling machine, automobile, paddle wheel boat, dry, diver snorkel, flying machine, parachute, and projector for pictures. In 1830s, British mathematician Charles Babbage invented a steam-powered computer that had a memory bank, made decisions, and recorded data. His idea was on target but his computer had to be trashed for lack of electronic know-how. Keep a sharp eye on, invention, on your invention. Copycats are out there. Joseph Henry invented a telegraph system in the 1830s that sent signals over short distances. In 1844, Samuel F.B. Morse jazzed up Joseph's invention, put together a Morse code dot dash system, and was tapped as an as inventor of the telegraph. In 1847, William Kelly invented a method of producing steel by burning off excess carbon in hot pig iron with a blast of cold air. Eight years later, Henry Bessemer's mammoth flame-shooting converters produced steel the same way. Who was known for the red-hot steel maker? Henry Bessemer. That's who. Of course, some inventions never take off at all. Andrew Jackson Jr. invented adjustable eyeglasses for chickens so that they wouldn't peck each other's eyes out. The chickens weren't interested. John Butts invented a hair-cutting helmet that sucked hair up into tiny holes while ele where electric coils burned hair to just the right length. Ouch! Elmer Walter invented a table knife with a mirror on the handle to use at meals for checking if food was stuck in his teeth. Disgusting! Franz Vester invented a coffin with an escape hatch and a breathing tube in case the person inside was still alive. Too gruesome. Other inventions take off so well. They're named for their inventor. Electricity is measured in volts. Alessandro Volta invented the electric battery. And Watts, James Watts, made steam power practical. Charles Macintosh's weatherproof fabric turned into Macintosh raincoats. During the French Revolution, Joseph Guillotine's guillotine beheaded victims. Rudolf Diesel invented the diesel engine that runs on redefined, unrefined oil. Here's the bottom line. Whether your invention is named after you or not, whether you're a dreamer, a loner, are laughed at, work all night, or put yourself in danger, your invention could change the world. It has happened. Vladimir Zworkin's 1923 electronic tube led to television. Three U.S. scientists, 1947 transistor, led to computers. Even more important, Johannes Gutenberg invented a hand-operated printing press with movable metal type in 1440s. In the 1440s. A printer could print in a day what it took a year to write by hand. Result? Books, books, books. People decided it was time to learn to read, and they did. In the end, being an inventor means pushing the limits of what human beings know and what human beings can do. Because you're a risk taker and will be on the quest onto the unknown, you have to be willing to try and fail.